Once upon a time, there was a mummy goat who had seven really naughty children, her kids. Now, children, she said, I'm going to Sainsbury's, right? Mm -mm 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 -mm. So don't let any strangers in, especially not the wolf, because he'll eat you up. Right, bye-bye, and don't break the furniture. And the kids said, <coughs> which meant, don't worry, mother, we'll watch out. And sure enough, as mother goat clippity-clopped down the road, there was the wolf sitting at the bottom of the garden, ticking his nose and eating something smelly. <coughs> Oh, great. She's gone. Have had time too, cos I'm starving. Now I'll be able to eat those three little pigs. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow. The... No, I won't. That's what I did yesterday. No, 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 I know, I know, I know. It's the seven little goats for dinner today. <sighs> they stalked hungrily towards the house. Dribbling and <laughs> taking the top off his ketchup bottle. <coughs> Meanwhile, the little goats had started playing Let's Break the Furniture when they heard... Who's there? It's the wolf! I've come to eat you! Let me in! Shove off! No one's allowed in except our mum. Oh, uh, okay. Hang on. <coughs> Who's there? It's your mum! You don't sound like I'm, Mum. Uh, yeah, well, I've not been well. <laughs> Go on, let me in. No, you've got a rough, scratchy voice. You're the wolf. Get lost. Oh, bums to it, said the wolf. And he went away and practised speaking with a nice voice. Hello. Hello, children. Hello, children. No, no, no. Hello, children. No, hello, children. That's it. Hello, children. Hello, children! Great! Yum yum! And don't forget the mustard! And he ran back to the goat house door. <laughs> the kids were playing a lovely game of spreading mud from the flower pots on the clean carpet when they heard... Who's there? Hello, children! It's your nice mother here. Open the door and lie on a plate! <laughs> All the little goats rushed to open the door. But the youngest kid, Billy, Billy the kid, Stop them. Hold on, be careful. Look at the window. Because the wolf was leaning on the windowsill and the little goat saw his hairy brown feet and yelled out, Oh, look, hairy brown feet. You're not our mum. Her feet are lovely and white. You're the horrible, stinky wolf. Get out of here. Oh, big bums to it, said the wolf and ran down the road to the baker's shop and said, Give me some white flour, quick. Get in the queue first, said the baker. Get stuffed, said the wolf. Pop. Ooh, what a rude young man, said a granny. Bosh, said the wolf. Don't you bosh my wife, said a granddad. Well, bish, bash, bosh, said the wolf. And threw the granddad into a strawberry gatto. And he was such a wolf, he head-butted all the grannies in the shop and ran off with a big bag of flour. He got back to the goat's house, poured the white flour all over his feet, ran up to the window and smash! Look! White feet, love, lovely voice, everything! Please let me in! Well, our mother doesn't usually smash in the windows. That seems a bit wolfy to me. What? Oh, blimey, who'd be a wolf? I have none of my mates are watching this. They'll think I've turned vegetarian. Look, you little... <laughs> uh, let me in, children, because... Because I've got some nice presents for you. Fantastic, said the kids. Prezzies. And threw open the door. <laughs> Here's Wolfie! Oh, no! What a mistake! Screamed the little goats. And they all ran round and round the house looking for somewhere to hide. Oh, oh, oh. They were all so frightened, most of them couldn't think properly and hid in idiotic places. One lay on the floor and pretended to be a mat. One put on a lampshade and pretended to be a light. The third covered himself in feathers and made some chicken noises. The fourth poured baked beans on its head and pretended to be toast. The fifth jumped down the toilet and pretended to be a big poo that wouldn't go away. The sixth stood right in front of the wolf, pretending to be a mirror. But clever little Billy ran into the garden and hid up a tree. The wolf ripped up the house, making a terrible mess, and found all of them except Billy. And as he found each one, hello, 
He wolfed them down whole. Hello! Hello down there! Wolf them all down whole like a wolf. Which he was, so that was great. He'd have liked to have eaten Billy too, just out of wolfish piggishness. But he couldn't find him. And he was already so full up with the six that he staggered outside and fell asleep under Billy's tree. <coughs> Before very long, the mother goat came home, carrying a great big pile of shopping and sweets. And what a sight greeted her. The window was broken. The house was a terrible mess. There seemed to be baked beans and feathers everywhere. You kids who've been climbing and fighting and playing rough games, when I get hold of you... <laughs> but then she realised the house was far too quiet. Something was wrong. She called out their names. But each time, there was no answer. Oh no, she said. Where are my babies? Hang on. They're probably hiding in the garden so they don't get whacked for scragging the house. So out into the garden she went. But they weren't there either. Oh, heaven help me. All six of my kids are missing. It was six, wasn't it? Oh, there's so many I can't remember. Yes, it was. It was only six. Seven, came a little voice from the tree. Seven, was there really? All seven of them gone then? No, mother, I'm up here in the tree. <gasps> you get down from there at once, she said, and climbed on a rock and helped Billy down. Naughty. <laughs> well, she thought it was a rock. It happened to be snoring. <laughs> Billy the kid told her the terrible news that the wolf had eaten all her other children. And you can imagine how she wept when she heard. Well, maybe you can't. Well, it was a bit like this. <laughs> listen, mother, said Billy. I can't listen right now. I'm weeping. <laughs> no, listen, please, mother. You're standing on the wolf. I know I'm standing on the wolf. Who am I? Oh, let's run away, said mum. But then they noticed there was something moving around inside the wolf's big, fat, gorged, enormous, ballooning tummy. <gasps> oh, look, Billy dear. He's got bumpy, bumpy things in his tummy. That's not bumpy, bumpy things, Mum. That's my brothers and sisters. <gasps> oh, how harrowing. Come on, Billy. Let's run away to Australia and live with the kangaroos and forget about the whole thing. No, Mother, said Billy. That's wrong. Just because someone's bigger than you doesn't mean you should let them push you around. Do you think so, Billy? I know so, said Billy. Have you got any scissors? Well, as a matter of fact, I have, yes, but I don't really think we should give the wolf a haircut, do you? And she watched, amazed, as Billy started to cut into the wolf's huge tummy. No, stop that, it'll wake up. Oh, no, how frightening. But hardly had Billy made one cut when the eldest kid <laughs> popped his head out. Poo! Oh, what a stink! You should see what the wolf's got in there. Oh, I mean, I thought goat said anything, but poo, eh? And Billy snipped a bit more, and all six kids sprang out. One after the other, and they were all alive and going poo, eh? Oh, and they were all so happy, they hugged Billy and Mother and jumped around like frogs at a wedding. Now let's run away, said Mother. He'll be furious when he wakes up and realises someone's nicked his lunch. Then we better make sure he's got a full tummy, said Billy. And he filled the wolf's tummy with big, heavy stones and stitched him up with a needle and thread. And the wolf <coughs> went on sleeping <coughs> and didn't feel a thing. And the kids all giggled and jumped up and down and ran in the house to watch the fun from their bedroom window. <coughs> In a couple of hours, the wolf woke up and felt very thirsty. He tried to walk to the river to get a drink. But as he started to walk, the stones in his belly knocked against each other and rattled and made him stagger from side to side. So he tried leaning to the left. And he fell over. He tried leaning to the right and nearly fell over. But all the same, bit by bit, Waddle by waddle with great difficulty. He made his way to the river. Made it. And he stooped over to drink and. Oh no! 
straight to the bottom, 20 foot under. And I'm afraid he had to drown miserably. Mind you, whoever drowned happily. But anyway, it served him right for being a horrid, granny head butting, greedy wolf.